That thing, that thing. Okay, never mind. I was going to say something very inappropriate. All right, so the play that we're going to do is. I'm going to be called... thinking about that the whole time. I won't be able. Like, what? The is, what was he thinking? Yeah. Now we need to. I won't be able to focus on my oh, part. Oh. Hey, come on! You're cutting into Emily's time here. We are going to start her new series, Let's American Fork. Yes. American Fork, and. Oh, um, fork. I guess, I guess, I guess we Let's should just jump without in. Without further ado, all Let's, right. Without further ado, <clears throat> kick it into gear, host of the podcast. You got it. Good afternoon, Radio for All listeners, and welcome to our new show. I'm your host, Bethany Lake. You might know me from some of your other favorite RFA shows, including Lakeside Views, Lakefront Property, and my personal favorite, Lake Squared where my best friend, Lake Bell, and I take on a new math problem every week. Today, though, we're coming to you on a more somber note, as we have the unfortunate duty and the privilege to introduce you to RFA's first foray into the true crime genre, American Fork. America. Mm. I'm joined today by my executive producer, Jeff King. Thanks so much for being with us today, Jeff. Hey, Bethany. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I have to say, it's a bit intimidating to be sharing airtime with uh, someone as accomplished as you are. <laughs> Not to mention smart and kind. Thanks, Jeff. And... <laughs> why don't you tell the audience how this new show came to be and why the topic is so close to our hearts? Of course. Um, although fans of the traditional true crime genre will not be disappointed, this might be a little different from what you're used to. How is that? Well, Bethany, a lot of true crime stories feature gruesome murders or cases that have been cold for decades. Not this time. Plus, mm. we have a personal connection to the case. <clears throat> but we... before we get to that... Let's explain the mystery that lurks at the center of this bizarre case. An American case in a truly American place. <laughs> American Fork, Utah. American Fork, Utah was first settled by Mormon pioneers in 1850. Thirty minutes down the road from Salt Lake City, this town of about 33,000 residents is known for two things— serving as the filming location of the infamous carnival scene in the Sandlot, and proudly displaying the world's largest operational deep fryer. For the past 75 years, this unique attraction has served as a monument to everything Americans hold dear and helped boost the city's somewhat meager tourism industry, mm. fondly known as Big Arza, after the city's first settler, Arza Adams. The deep fryer weighs in at around 4,000 pounds and requires over 1,800 liters of oil. It's a miracle it isn't sponsored by Exxon. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, although it draws thousands of TripAdvisor tourists looking to spin their pensions every year, the fryer is only put to use once a year during the last weekend in August at what is known as the Final Fry Festival. But in anticipation of this famed local event, which is truly the highlight of the year for many American Forkians, something strange happened. Big Arza went missing under the cover of night. How could someone pull off such a heist? Why would someone want to pull off such a heist? <laughs> yeah, these are just a few of the hard-hitting questions we'll aim to answer over the coming weeks. But there's another element to this crime we haven't even discussed. About three weeks ago, one of our production assistants, Kenny... Curtis. Right, Curtis. <clears throat> Curtis received an anonymous tip that someone was going to steal the famous deep fryer and that it might be of interest to RFA to cover the story. That was actually the first time I'd heard of Big Arza. Me too! At the time, everyone laughed it off, assuming it was some kind of hoax. But when the heist actually went down last week, 
we were all ready to eat our words and apologize to Curtis. Yet, strangely enough, Curtis mysteriously vanished the same night as big as Arza. When we hadn't heard from Curtis in two days, we naturally started to worry. Unfortunately, federal law enforcement was not as concerned with the case as we are, and declined to investigate, citing lack of a concrete connection between Big Arza's disappearance and Curtis's disappearance as their primary reason for not taking the case. That's where we come in. A missing member of our RFA family means this case is personal for us, so we decided to go to work. Yeah. Kenny's Curtis. truly... <clears throat> Curtis. Yep, yep. Curtis truly is in, an important part of this family. To me, he's like uh, that cousin I so love to see once a year and catch up with for ten minutes, but then I always seem to forget about him once we part ways. Uh, anyway, family is family, which means traveling to American Fork ourselves and hiring the best of the best to help us solve the case. And that's precisely who we're going to introduce here on the show. He's cracked such high-profile cases as the Great Toaster Fire of 1985. And across the pond, he solved the mystery of the royal family's missing China in 1992. He's a world-renowned detective, and we're lucky to have him in the studio with us today. Welcome, Detective Robert Scoop. Thank you for having me. Mm. And uh, hello to your audience. No, thank you for coming on. It's a mm. rare privilege to be working with uh, someone as esteemed as yourself. Mm. Oh, you are too kind. Is it a privilege? I suppose. An honor? Perhaps that as well. I am perhaps the world's most observant mind in the realm of culinary disappearances. And yet, Despite all of my successes, when I heard that Big Arza had gone missing, I was stopped dead in my tracks. Mm. Ahab had his Moby Dick. Robert Scoop has his world's largest operational deep fryer. Mm. Life truly imitates art. Well put. And for those of you unaware, the reason Detective Scoop feels so strongly about this case is that he is actually a native Forkian. That I am, Bethany. I've been proud to call American Fork home for my entire life. It's the reason I do what I do. Could you please elaborate on that? Growing up in American Fork, there weren't a ton of channels on TV. But sometimes, when I arranged the old bunny ears just right, I could watch Inspector Clouseau in those Pink Panther movies. I remember even as a young boy thinking, gee golly, that's the kind of man I'd like to be when I grow up. An aspiration you've surely lived up to. And on top of that, would you believe my father was the original maintenance man in charge of the deep fryer? Mm. You might say, I didn't choose this culinary mystery. It chose me. That's exactly what we were going to say. It's clear this case means an awful lot to you. Mm. More than you could ever know. This case isn't just about the thrill of the hunt for me. This one is for my dad. It's for my town. It's for every little girl and boy whose imagination is brought to life by Big Arza each year. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. RFA stands by our convictions, and it heartens us to know that you do too. Together, I'm sure we can solve these conjoined mysteries. And I look forward to working with you. The hunt is on. Indeed. But before we get to that, we'd like to introduce one more person who will be integral in helping us solve this case. A man who may have more of a personal investment in American Fork than anyone else. Our guide, Mayor Walter P. McCormick. Thank you, Bethany. It's an honor to serve my country by serving the great town of American Fork. I'm sure it is. Could you tell us a little more about your personal connection to the case? Oh, it would be my pleasure, son. 
Like Bobby here, <laughs> I'm a lifelong forking. Heck, outside of my mission work, I've never really even left. And after that, I got a political science degree from Utah Valley University. Go Wolverines! And worked my way through the ranks up to mayor. A position I've been proud to call my own for a little over 14 years now. Wow. <laughs> you truly are a Forkian through and through. Yes, ma'am. And my ties to Big Arza run deep. When I was... <laughs> Uh, you all right there? Want me to make you some tea? <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to decline. <laughs> I just have some water, please. <laughs> right, sorry. Here, um, here you go, Mayor. Uh, I always keep a spare bottle on hand. Now. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Now, if you could please tell us more about your relationship to Big Arza. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Thank you. So, as I was saying, I have a deep connection to Big Arza. It brings tens of tourists to our beautiful town every year. Above all else, it's the thing that's put American Fork on the map. Mm. Plus, when I was in high school, I was a groundskeeper at Big Arza Park every summer. I even got to work the final fry a few times, filling Big Arza up with oil and then shoveling out the used oil once the fry was over. I paid for my first two years of college that way. <laughs> Without Big Arza, I would never have become Mayor Walter P. McCormick. I would just be a guy named Walt. Wow. A truly inspiring story. Mm. Bolstered by your conviction, Detective Scoop's credentials, and the backing of RFA and listeners like you. I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of this caper. Yes, we will, Bethany. And speaking of help from our listeners, we <sighs> could definitely use it. As we mentioned, the RFA team is currently on location in American Fork, and we're not going to leave until the case is solved. But keeping a whole crew on location indefinitely isn't cheap, and that's why we're counting on you, dear audience, out of the kindness of your hearts to please help us out with any size contribution you can make, big or small. We sure appreciate your help keeping us in town until the job is done. And what a quaint and charming town it is. So, viewers, we hope you'll continue to tune in to this season of American Fork and join us as we unearth layer after layer of this intriguing case. As we work to unearth this mystery double whammy, we'll explore the local mythology of Big Arza, interview Forkians of all walks of life, and venture to answer the questions of why anyone would want to steal such a pure slice of America. And please, if you have any information on the whereabouts of Big Arza or our beloved colleague, Curtis, contact us at AmericanForkPod at RFA.org. Absolutely. Curtis, if you're listening, your work family hopes you will come home soon. And from all of us here at Radio For All, I'm Bethany Lake saying... Until the next bite, America. America. Mm. America. Mm. Fork, 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 fork. And that was scene one of American Fork. Oh, you guys did so fantastically. Thank you yeah. so much, Emily Labus. Mm -hmm. And Ian Molnar for for writing this. Can you guys come in the room and talk a little bit about it? Here we are. Oh, I man. want that theme song played at my funeral. Okay, <laughs> I think we can. I think we can arrange that. I think. Okay, cool. That. Whoever's um, doing this knows. Yes. So, uh, yeah, where the fuck did this come from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. That's a good question. Do you mean where the fork? Where the fork? Oh. Yes, no. and I stole it from Ian. I can't even claim it. I stole it from Ian in the side chat okay. earlier. 
it doesn't matter. I give credit. And in history now is having said it. You so, no, okay. but I attributed nah, it. You, you recorded it first, so it's yours. Well, I mean, to be fair, we also are blatantly ripping off no. The Good Place, which I know you still haven't seen. That's fine. That's um, oh, it's amazing. It is. Uh, anyway, um, so this is a really fun one. I'm excited to be able to introduce you guys to my friend Ian, who is a Chicago-based uh, stand-up comedian before live in-person entertainment died and is also a writer. Um, so it's been a lot of fun for us to work together on this. And honestly, we the idea really kind of, God, it's hard to say the exact genesis of it. It felt like we went into it thinking we want to write a spoof of a true crime podcast. We want to incorporate a detective. And then from there, the idea kind of it, it's it's like robert scoop said the idea chose us really mm. i'd say <laughs> well put Ian, um, do you have anything you want yeah, to add yeah yeah uh i mean the uh, emily approached with the idea of doing you know satire of some sort and she was watching or listening to a lot of true crime at the time um and yeah i thought it was one something i haven't seen satirized or at least in memory can't think of um, so it sounded like just a really fun little thing to play with. And, you know, it's, as it unfolds, it's like, it's super fun to think about how many directions this could go because, you know, mysteries are layered. So, right. um, and super excited to play with the locals in American Fork as we go forward too. So, mm. um, yeah, it just seemed like it was a really, a, a really good world kind of ripe for, ripe for writing about. So, uh, and we had a ton of fun doing it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, we had a ton of fun doing it as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. and we're, we're looking forward to more episodes. So uh, for anyone, uh, this is this is our second episode of our new format, um, and we've decided that we're going to be doing this original audio drama once every month. So the next episode will be a month from now, um, and so you guys have plenty of time to really cook up a fun scheme for American Fork. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> one thing... That our lead editor just asked Ian, yeah. do you yes. have any of your stand-up on YouTube anywhere? Um, yes. Uh, let me double check that it's still not private. But yeah, if you just go to YouTube and search like Ian Molnar, uh, so search Ian Molnar Zanies, and there's like a setup from there. Cool. Ian Molnar what? Zanies, Z-A-N-I-E-S. Nice. All right. You don't have to do it right yeah. now. <laughs> oh, I was just no, going to no, I was just going to do it. Was that, that, that wasn't the question. Oh, that's yeah, you. That's you. Right I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Hey. Well, maybe hey. there's time for that. Oh, maybe there's right. time for that. Fine. Right. No, it's all it's all pre-covid. We'll no one gives a shit anymore. All right? It's oh. not relevant. Covid <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, do you, well, do any of you ever feel yourself like kind of feeling bitter when you watch things from pre-covid like how could you be so? I yeah. I was watching a movie the other day. Right now, like I don't want to watch you having fun in public. Like I was mm -hmm. watching a movie the other day, and I like out loud to my friend as a person entered the store without a mask on was like, "What the hell are they doing?" And then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, I feel like now in TV and movies, anytime someone shakes hands, I'm like, oh, that's so Ooh. bull. Why are you doing that?" <laughs> wash your yeah. hands. Yeah. But anyway, you guys did an awesome job. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys much. did a great job. Thank um, you. If I could leave you with any closing thoughts, it would be that American Fork is a real place. And it's important to me that you all know that. Yeah, so, we really got to go it? now. Yeah. I know. We're, Should we plan yeah, a trip? <laughs> but we, we, we have can, to. We, we also do... have to warn them that they won't find a really exciting, big, giant. Oh, no. That, that's ours. Because Sorry, it's really no. been stolen. The deep fire. That was ours. The deep fire was ours. We can do the last episode on location. Oh my God! Yes, I go. love it. <laughs> yes. So, deep fryer hours. Uh, scene or location of the carnival scene in the Sandlot. True thing, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. If we ever run out of SBTL ideas, I can just recite that movie from start to finish. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we should yeah, do that at some point. Anyway, Even if we thanks don't so much run for out having us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll play the dog though. Oh, I love the dog. Okay. I'll play, I'll anyway. play the dog. <laughs> Thank you guys right. so much for having us on. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, thank, thank you guys so much. Thank you. It. One more. There we go. There we go.